Before I get started with this reading, I'd just like to take a second to remind you that you are able to read your energy better than anyone else can. So, if you enjoy tarot, please by all means get a tarot deck. They don't cost much. And learn symbolism. You can do that with uh, the Dictionary of Symbols by Sir Lowe. I'll put that information on the screen. It's all good information. It'll help you to consider your own dreams, your own energy, and your own life, and the world around you. And that's really, to me, the whole point of spirituality. Let's get into the reading. Good morning. I'd like to try and do a reading for you today. This is with some energy that's been hanging around for about four days now, three or four days. And I wasn't sure if I should make this video or try to capture it, but I think it might be very useful to somebody. And because of that reason, I'm going to go ahead and try. And if this doesn't work out, then I'm just not going to put it up. Basically, about four nights ago was a very windy night, and I do not like wind when I'm sleeping. I like rain. That's fine. Even the sounds of traffic is okay. But for some reason, uh, when it's windy out at night, I don't sleep well, and I often have bad dreams. So... I woke up in the morning after that and I heard two shots and I saw turkeys uh, run through my backyard. So I had seen a male turkey displaying in that area the day before. I'm assuming it's the same flock and probably someone was hunting turkeys. Okay, so two shots and that kind of stuck with me and the day was kind of a dark day. It was overcast and the clouds were heavy and it just felt like something was a little off. So uh, I went through that day and I noticed all the shade in uh, various areas I was looking at and I was considering the nature of how darkness is used to bring out light. In painting, uh, if you're not familiar with me and my channel, I do paintings too. At any rate, uh, one of the things painters will do is they'll, they'll background in dark and then layer over that in lighter colors. That contrast really builds up a focus on light things. So I had a feeling that this, this was going to be a kind of a difficult reading, but I think it might help somebody. So fair warning, uh, I do think that this is going to consider some of the negative aspects of loss and some of the positive aspects of loss. In other words, coming to terms with what you do have after you've lost things. And in particular, in this case, after losing two very important things. That day I went to a birthday party uh, for my daughter, uh, which is difficult for me because, you know, I'm, I'm not really someone that likes to be around other people. There were two people there that I knew already, and it was kind of nice to see them. But uh, And my daughter had a really good time, which was nice. She just kind of is at that age where she just melts into groups and seems to be very comfortable, and it's nice to see. Uh, that wasn't something that was easy for me when I was young, but it it's something that's easy for her. So before I got there, I had seen a raven. And then after that, I saw a single magpie. So that's why I have the raven and the magpie here. When I got to the birthday party or on the way, I was thinking of uh, what could I take a picture of because I don't want to take a picture of people. And I had this idea that I would take a picture of balloons to kind of capture that, um, to capture that feel. And when I got there, immediately I saw the three, three hanging balloons and two of them were black. And I thought that's kind of significant. Um, so I'm going to include that here. So I, I do think that someone has had two negative occurrences recently or they may have happened a while ago and they are still strong within that person and they're, they're having difficulty coping with those two negative things that have happened. Okay? If that's you, I think then, or if that's something that's been the case with you, then perhaps this is for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do oracle cards. I, I will say at the birthday party, uh, I found myself leaning against a maple tree. I love maple trees. 
I've loved them since I was a kid. Uh, I had this overwhelming sensation of of experiencing things as a, as a child again. It's very uh, warming, and I, I feel like people don't do that enough. I had a memory of playing with uh, the helicopter seeds from maple trees when I was young. I used to find them in the street. Uh, this was in Colorado. And I would take them home and I like to throw them up in the air and then, you know, you just kind of watch the seeds helicopter back down to the ground. And over days they would get broken and they wouldn't work anymore eventually. And the seeds would be gone and then it would be winter. And that kind of was a bummer. Uh, but that's the cycle. So, uh, unfortunately, my tree oracle doesn't have maple trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some possible meanings of maple trees. Instead of my uh, tree oracle, I have my bird oracle. And the bird oracle is, uh, again, by Jeannie Rudland. I have a shaman's dream oracle, and I'll give you the information for that. And then I have my uh, Arthur Rackham oracle here. And I'll pull one from each of these, except for the uh, Oracle of the Birds, and uh, I still wasn't sure if I was going to do this reading. The next day, again, I saw a magpie, singular, and then it was followed by a raven, singular. And I thought, I, I have to try. I, I don't know who this is for, but I have to try to get this message out. I do have my two stones there that will tell me when I flip them over who this is for. I don't know going into this who this is for. Or what signs might be involved okay so let's go ahead and look at the cards for the for the bird oracle the first was the raven that I saw so it went one two and then the next day it went one two the raven oracle is about ancestral wisdom uh, the ancestors are calling you from afar so you can sense their magic and wisdom so perhaps other people are trying to help you people maybe that you valued, or people that value you, and they want to see something good happen for you. They're trying to give you a message. The magpie is about happy partnerships, and usually I see magpies in, in twos. Uh, often I'll see a raven singular. I'd say 50-50, but more often than not, I'll see magpies in twos. The magpie card is telling you to reflect on what is, uh, on what is, and it's time to work together towards a great vision. Who you would work together with, I don't know. Uh, the balloons were two black and one pink at the party, so I suspect there is a some form of feminine spirit around you that you can work with. A feminine person, let's say. Perhaps a daughter. Perhaps a mother or a grandmother. In my case, it would have been a grandmother. <clears throat> I pre-shuffled these decks. Let's take a look at this oracle for the shaman's, shaman's dream. Dances on one foot. Balancing act. So, maintain balance. And then Arthur Rackham's oracle. Again, pre-shuffled. We have fecundity. Creative power. Okay. Uh, that's very interesting. So, the ability to maintain balance is important between negative and positive, as I was just discussing. Fecundity is often a, a color that's associated with, well, it's an idea that's associated with two colors, green and black. And I'll start this with a quote from Bob Dylan, because I was already considering this very fact about the color black. The cycle of, of life and death and the new life coming from death is part of kind of what I think is, is going on here. So that's positive so far for me. This means that this is in line. From the Lightseer's uh, Tarot, I will pull past, present, and future. Pre-shuffled again. Empress in the past, a state of growing, a state of creative power in the present. The Four of Wands, 
The Four of Wands often represents a home or home life, and it's inverted. So this would mean something negative happened in the home. And the future is the Ace of Cups inverted. Normally the Ace of Cups represents a, a beginning of love. This could represent the ending of love or the lack thereof. This is in line with what I was expecting. In many ways it's good for the reading. In other ways it's very negative. Let's clarify the Empress. Temperance. And the Two of Swords. Notice that Temperance has two cups and we have two swords. Temperance is associated with Sagittarius. That may be part of this reading. The idea of Temperance is stated in the in the word itself, Temperance, trying to maintain balance between land and water. Again, land and water often associated with the cycle of life. Fecundity. The Two of Swords represents trying to make a decision. Let's continue on and see what we get for the others. I want to consider that a little bit more. For the Four of Wands, I have the Six of Pentacles inverted. And the Eight of Swords. For the Ace of Cups. Eight again. Eight of Wands inverted. And the Page of Wands inverted. Let me reorder these here so I can consider them a little bit better. <sighs> Anytime you see a two, it represents a choice, going with intuition, and trying to... Um, Maintain balance. This is modifying the Empress, which is eternal creativity. And of course, it could represent pregnancy. This could represent, uh, of course, someone who's trying to find balance in life between two decisions or between two people. Perhaps themselves and a child. They're trying to balance decisions and use their intuition to do so. They may have had intuition, and they may have tried to maintain balance or make what they consider to be a rational decision. These are not necessarily in alignment. Temperance is often associated with fire, and if you notice the Two of Swords here, of course it's a sword, so it's air, but also the moon is here. And the moon often is associated with water, and if you notice all the water here, it's heavy in water or emotion. So there may have been a struggle between a person's intuition and what they thought logically was appropriate. They may have chosen what they thought was appropriate over their intuition. The Four of Wands represents a home that has been turned upside down. The Six of Cups here is inverted. This can of often represent uh, breadcrumbing or not sharing appropriately if you notice the scales here. So this is inverted and because it's inverted this may have been an unfair situation, and a person may have been trapped mentally um, within their thoughts, not knowing what to do. Again, here you can see little water, the area is dry, and in the back is a fortress on a hill. So they may have been trapped in some form of fortress on a hill, away from emotion, unable to express emotion. In the future, the Ace of Cups. Again, the Ace of Cups represents a beginning of some form of emotion. It's a positive card, however it's inverted here, which could mean the ending of something that was meant to bring uh, emotional fulfillment. A lack of uh, conversation. These are, uh, this often is a card of movement or a card of discussion when it's this way. However, it's inverted here. So it represents a lack of that, a lack of communication, and a lack of sharing of emotion. 
the Page of Wands represents a uh, an offer for creativity. It often represents youth. However, it's inverted here, so it could be the ending of that. The ending of, perhaps, uh, youthful love. So, overall, the reading is a difficult one. And uh, I was expecting a difficult reading, so this is kind of in line with what I was expecting. I'll just say this. There's always a chance to, with an ending, to start over again. And as I was discussing painting and the layering of, of colors, and as I was discussing the birds that are involved, the raven and the magpie, it's possible to work together with, with what you have around you that is positive, to align yourself with people that are positive, and create yourself over again, to start over again. This is a, an important process of life that needs to happen for everyone at some point in time in their life. And the best way to go through that is to be around other people that have gone through the same thing. So if you are aware of other people that have gone through something like this, this looks like, to me, this looks like uh, the possibility of a, a divorce or a separation, perhaps. And realizing that what had been something that seem very stable is gone and um, almost all of us go through that at some point in time in our life. In the photo that I, I share with you of the balloons you'll notice there's two black and one pink. For me that's very positive. That means there is a positive feminine energy that's available for you to some degree. As I said for me that would have been my grandmother and that positive feminine energy will help you get through this and uh, if you've been around people that have had to recreate themselves and that happens uh, at some point for most people you'll understand the value in recreating yourself and in the end if you uh, apply yourself to the process and allow yourself still to acknowledge the beauty and the light that remains if you notice here, I'll just point this out, that a raven and a magpie are of the same family, corvid, but the magpie is a little bit more colorful. It has white in it, so perhaps um, if the raven, the idea of the raven is disturbing to you, consider the coloration of the magpie and allow the memories of your youth and other happy memories to be what sustains you through the change that needs to happen and be hopeful that in the future things can be better because they can. That's it for your reading. I hope this helps somebody. Uh, let's find out uh, what the stones are. That's it for the reading. I hope it helped you.